lead to the darkest conclusion of all. Around five years ago, a group of scientists and philosophers began arguing there might be another way to travel in time. But it wasn't a machine in space, and it wouldn't involve moving galaxies around. It would be a computer. And the pioneer of this unlikely approach was that unlikely pioneer of time machines, Professor Frank Tipler. From the 1970s, he'd been excited by a trend in computers. People realized that processing speed of computers was increasing exponentially. Every year, every few years, every 18 months, the processing speed would double. If this trend was to continue unabated, it would mean computers would get ever faster and ever more powerful. So much so, that in the far future, a super civilization would have computers which make ours look puny. Imagine this occurring faster and faster. If that were to occur, it would be possible to process an infinite amount of information. It was this infinite computing power, Tipler said, which would allow a future civilization to travel in time. They'd do it using virtual reality. The images computers can create have improved hugely over the last 30 years. But many physicists believe eventually computers will be able to make virtual images which are so good they'd be indistinguishable from reality. They'd be exact copies of the real world down to the last particle. In the distant future, simulating physical systems with very high accuracy so that they look perfectly real to the user of the virtual reality will become commonplace and trivial. But what if a future civilization wasn't just able to create images of fictional events? What if instead they could create images of their own real past? Then they'd be able to make exact three-dimensional copies of events and places in our time. These simulations would be populated by beings identical to us. They'd feel like us. They'd have thoughts just like us. They'd even think they were us. Our future descendants could then use these images to find out about their past. They'd have a time machine, but they wouldn't need to travel to the past. They'd bring the past to them. So imagine an advanced civilization, and suppose that I want to visit the past. It might turn out not to be possible to build a time machine and actually go back into the past. Physics might simply not permit that. There is a second way in which they could get the experience of living in the past. And that would be by creating a very detailed and realistic simulation of the past. The notion computers might one day be used to create exact copies of the past might seem like a wild intellectual exercise. But a new generation of believers in time travel have taken the idea to its own wild intellectual conclusion. And they've pointed out that a super civilization wouldn't just make one perfect simulation of the past. An advanced civilization would have enough computing power that even if it devoted only a tiny fraction of 1% of that computing power for just one second in the course of its maybe thousand years long existence, that would be enough to create billions and billions of ancestor simulations. 
Every time science has thought it has found a way to control time, it's been forced to confront a worrying implication. This latest solution is no exception, because it too turns out to have a bitter twist. One dictated by the laws of mathematical probability. If the computer of the future is churning out billions of simulations, how do we know we are living in the original real world and not one of the billions of copies? In fact, the odds against us being real are billions to one against. There would be a lot more simulated people like you than there would be original non-simulated ones. And then you've got to think, hang on, if almost everybody like me are simulated people, and just a tiny minority are non-simulated ones, then I'm probably one of the simulated ones, rather than one of the exceptional non-simulated ones. In other words, you're almost certainly living in an ancestor simulation, right now. The better the simulation gets, the harder it will be able to tell whether or not you're in a simulation or in the real thing, whether you live in a fake universe or a real universe. And indeed, the distinction between what is real and what is fake would simply evaporate away. Inside the simulation, you can't tell any difference between the simulated environment, the virtual reality, and the real environment. In fact, this environment we now find ourselves in could be just a simulation. Three hundred years ago, science set out on a quest to master time, to control it. People didn't like time being controlled by a super-intelligent, superior being. We'd do it for ourselves instead. But every time we made a breakthrough, there was a downside. Now we're told we may not even be real. Instead, we may merely be part of a computer program. Our free will, as Newton suggested, is probably an illusion. And just to rub it in, we are being controlled by a super-intelligent, superior being, who is, after all, the Martine. From the point of view of science, it's a catastrophic idea. The purpose of science is to understand reality. If we're living in virtual reality, we are forever barred from understanding nature. Our investigation of the nature of time has led inevitably to question the nature of reality. And it would be a true irony if uh, the culmination of this great scientific story was to undermine the very existence of the whole enterprise and indeed the existence of the rational universe. A new series of real-life business drama, Trouble at the Top, is next tonight here on BBC Two. The universe is not only queer than we suppose, it is queer than we can suppose.